Guys, thank you for being so supportive of the channel and for making comments on the last video. We're going to distribute that limited edition ERC20 token right here. Muhammad Osama made the comment, wow, thanks man. Just needed this video to keep me going in KSA. We don't have much of a minor community. Most of them are starters and it gets pretty frustrating doing things alone. Hey, Muhammad, glad to be uplifting. Thank you so much for making an uplifting comment. Make sure that you have token support on that address or make a comment below after you've set up a new Ethereum address on my Ether wallet. All right, guys, enjoy this interview with GR Cooling. So guys, I've got with me Neil from Green Revolution Cooling GRC, the Immersion Cooling Authority. You know, we've been around since 2009. Mm -hmm. We really commercialized um, immersion cooling. We use a single phase immersion cooling. Very effective, but also much more cost effective than using Chlorinert or Novec. So those are upwards of $200 a gallon and they evaporate. So, you know, there, there was a study done by, I think it was Lawrence Berkeley, one of the national labs. They found some energy savings with their tests, but they found that all the energy savings were canceled out by having the high cost of replacing the fluid. Got it. So, so it's, TCO became a problem. Exactly. You know, it's, it's a, what we say is it's essentially like pouring Dom Perignon out because it evaporates. So ours is it's a much more cost effective. It's about 99, 98% as effective. So with two phase, it's about 1 to 3% cooling overhead. We're like about 3 to 5% cooling overhead. At that point, you know, what does it matter? It's a dielectric fluid. It's non-conductive. So it's very safe. Uh, it's similar to a baby oil. Uh, it has better thermal capacity than that. We can use pretty much any equipment in here. There's just a couple modifications that we make. And so the way it works is it just, we have a manifold, shoots down cold coolant. It comes up through the servers, and then it's taken out here and goes into the coolant distribution unit. Then goes through the same cycle, and then you're hooked up into a a water loop and a heat rejection system. The U.S. Air Force, they finally released a public report talking about all the benefits that they've had with using it. And two of the things that really stuck out was one, they're able to go from 153 racks to eight racks with our solution. And they were able to significantly reduce their power. So, are you familiar familiar with PUE measurements? I'm not familiar with PUE oh. measurements, and it, it could be that some of our audience, oh. even though we got a lot of miners, we got a lot, very we got a lot of devs, but yeah. not a lot of um, data center not, people. Yeah, not a lot of data yeah, center I, people. I, not a lot of uh, scale, right? I've so, definitely uh, noticed that. There's, there's talking with a, with a miner versus a, like a, a data center person. Um, you know, it's it's a different it's a different market, it's different different right. field. And, and not to make it too punny or weird, but we're trying to dip our toes in the water of HPC. So exactly. So, so you got to learn this. Yeah. You got to learn this. So they're running up what they, what they call is PUE powder utilization effectiveness. Total power divided by server power. So for example, if you have a 1.45 PUE, you are having to use a 45% uh, of what the server power is to cool those servers. So let's let's talk numbers because it makes it much easier. Yeah. Let's say you had a megawatt of power, 1,000 kilowatts, right? You have a PUE of 1.45, so you know you're using 450 kilowatts to cool a thousand kilowatts of servers. Okay, that's some waste. That is waste. But there, there are a lot of places that are even more inefficient. Um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, miners in the audience are cringing because they're like, I know. Oh, but my crypto, my, my exactly. Yeah, right, my profits. So 1.45. So with our solution, since we take out the fans, mm -hmm. we reduce the server power. So it's typically about five to thirty percent, depending on the equipment you're using. Ant miners are kind of more on the lower end. We dealt with other miners that are about 10 to 20 percent and then for servers traditional servers we've been upwards of 30 percent so it just depends you know especially gpus have a lot of fans so so in this example they were essentially able to power and cool the servers for 85 percent of the power they were using just to power the servers so 850 kilowatts I don't care where you are in this in this country, you're probably going to clear the capex of of, oh, yeah. of getting into equi equipment like oh, yeah. this just in, within your first month or two. But with high performance computing and you know oil and gas customers, they're using a lot of GPUs, not mining, but for, but you know to help them find oil and, yeah. and to run other calculations. Sure. And what we've seen is 
there's been an increased density. You know, Skylake servers use more power than the old ones. GPUs are, are getting even more powerful. That's consumer, and then the enterprise ones use even more power. You can be doing one and a half kilowatts per U. So if you had a 52U rack, which we use a lot, that could be 75 kilowatts right there. Power density is increasing. I was speaking with somebody who they're running DGX, right? They were only able to use a quarter of their rack. They weren't able to fully populate the rack because the rack could only handle this much cooling. What a terrible reason to stop building. I know, I know. Yeah, we were like, one rack, we can do over 100 kilowatts per rack. That's what we've been doing for our hash tanks and hash racks. That's our that's our system that's focused on uh, blockchain mining. Mostly S9s, but we can work with other equipment. But really where I see the future, the distributed computing is the HPC that you're talking about. <laughs> and guys, if you haven't paid close attention to that, definitely check it out at mineyour.biz. We're trying to find like-minded GPU miners that are that are seeing there's a movement and there's infrastructure and there's support yes. for HPC. You don't need to be afraid of moving from blockchain to HPC. Yeah, and there's going to be a lot of, of, of middle ground with that. Your company and other companies are starting to build a market for that because that's essentially what has to be done. You have to convince the enterprise customers and, and, and the other businesses that their information is safe, that it's going to be cost effective, but I think that's going to be the big growth because instead of necessarily instead of having to build a new data center, which you know with a lot of them they're not they're not running 100%, they're only running part. You know basically AWS distributed. That's going to make everything look, you know, small in comparison, right? There's going to be some evolution of the equipment. You're not necessarily going to be able to use always the same equipment that you're currently using, but the great thing about GPUs and to to an extent FPGAs is there is some flexibility. You know, just as what you can do now is mine a bunch of different coins, you're going to be able to do a lot of different, you know, you, you may be able to do some AI, some machine learning, some cloud rendering, maybe maybe games, you know, game streaming. There's a lot of stuff. And because there is a middle ground between enterprise where we need to use $7,000 GPUs and then with the ones who are, you know, mining with a uh, gaming card. It's all dependent on the specific requirements of the end user. Sometimes they need higher precision. Then, you know, if you're doing like nuclear testing kind of thing, yeah, you probably want, you know, right. you probably want to be very specific. Yeah, and it should be clear, but with us going into HPC, we're not trying to, we're not trying to get DOD contracts for doing that level of precision. I'm on the same page. We, we've chatted about this off camera. And yeah. You know, a lot of my community, we're small. We're a small faction of the mining community, but we're growing. Great. Uh, because clearly demand is there. It's been there. Mm -hmm. And in blockchain, we can still do that. There's nothing stopping us from doing blockchain also. Exactly. Right? Like, it's all about cycle scavenging in my book. That's how we keep that lean, scrappy, sort of uh, minor sensibility. Mm -hmm. But we know we've got to move towards these sort of industrial solutions for scaling into HPC. Yeah. Let's talk in kind of practical terms with GR Cooling. Uh, say that, that uh, you know, Johnny Home Miner, mm -hmm. he's got five rigs. Mm -hmm. uh, five rigs with eight GPUs in it. What would be uh, a solution that GR Cooling offers that would fit his needs to get started? Well, to be honest, for his needs, um, we don't have a solution. For our heat rejection, it's usually a, an evaporative cooler. That tends to be the most upfront, cost-effective solution. And it also gets to the typically the lowest temperature compared to a dry cooler or, or a hybrid cooler. Some people use chillers. Miners would never use chillers, but enterprise customers will use will use chillers. And you know, if you give us a chiller, we'll hook up into it. It'll just make our system more efficient. But we don't need that. You know, warm water is great. You know, we've talked with people who are like. You know, they're getting warm water out from, you know, maybe their rear door heat exchangers or or their liquid to chip. And we're like, we could take that water and then cool our servers with it. <laughs> you know, because, yeah, we can use 100-degree water. Nice. let chat really briefly about a solution that, that could work for the... Um for the mid-scale miner, so talking 100 GPUs below, so sure. maybe that a rack's worth. We can handle more than 100 GPUs in a rack. It's ultimately about the density that you can get the GPUs, because really, at this point, it's not going to hit the limitation of 105 kilowatts. We'll be able to handle that. We also kind of base around our system, to give you an idea. We have a coolant distribution unit. That's the, the engine, if you will, okay? okay? We typically spec it out as it can do 100 kilowatts, 
or so. Um, you know, you can customize it. And it's also based on the, the type of water you're getting and everything. But we kind of just based around that. So with our uh, with our enterprise customers, when they're doing CPU based stuff with like blades, mm -hmm. um, they're doing you know 25 to 30 kilowatts. What we're seeing with GPUs mm -hmm. and, and such is they're getting to 50 to 60 kilowatts. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, and then then it's really it's really been you know working with uh, Bitcoiners that um, you know we we've actually really been reaching that point you know 100 kilowatts you know we can do 200 kilowatts in there if we have the right water but you know another another of the trouble is the pdu so we created custom smart pdus 200 amp pdus huh. can't you can't buy those because you know nobody that's 100 kilowatts that you can handle. But I'd love to be a distributor. There's also a waterfall effect is, you know, if you're going with more power, how you design the container is going to be different. You know, you're going to have to run bigger uh, conduit. You're going to have to have a bigger cooling tower. Sure. Um, but, you know, it's it's designed to handle over 600 kilowatts. So <laughs> nice. a 40 foot container. Oh exactly. my gosh. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Where can they find out more about your product? And sure. where are you guys most active in terms of, and responsive in terms of social media, email, contact? Our website is grcooling.com. You can also find us Green Revolution Cooling. Search for that or uh, hash tank or hash rack you will be able to find it so we're on Twitter we're on Facebook um, LinkedIn but honestly the best way is um, just send us an email okay. um, you know you can uh, info at GR cooling info or? at GR cooling or just go to the website and there's a contact us form Neil appreciate your time man thank you very much yeah super excited hopefully guys check out their stuff and uh, and let's let's talk about this over on discord what do you think Thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for being subscribed and clicking the bell icon. And thank you for making a comment. Tell us what you liked about this video or let me know what you'd like to see in one of our upcoming videos. Go ahead and leave an Ethereum address that has ERC20 token support, like on my Ether wallet, and we will select another winner before the next video. Remember, you're the reason I make these videos. I love your face. And I will see you in the next one.